today I'll be covering what's new in GIMP's latest development and release version, GIMP 2.99.12. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. And you can also enroll in my WordPress for Beginners 2023 no code WordPress masterclass also on Udemy. And I'll include links to these courses as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. All right, so let's dive right in here. For starters, when you first open up this latest release version, you're going to get the welcome screen. And down here at the bottom of the welcome screen, you're going to have a tab called release notes. So I'll click on that. And here you're going to see the spark notes or just like some brief notes about what has been released in this latest release version. So you guys can always scroll through that if you'd like. But the first new feature I wanna point out here is that on the left-hand side, you're going to see that some of these little bullet points are a little different. So these top two here, they look like play buttons. And basically what this is, if you click on this, it's going to run a little demo over here. And basically what happens is it takes you to a tool. Uh, in this case, it takes you to the tool that has the new feature. So in this case, the bucket fill tool. And then it's gonna give you a little highlight that plays out so that it's showing you exactly what is new about this tool. So let's just double click on it again. You're gonna see it says activate the tool and then it kind of starts highlighting some stuff inside the tool. So that's a cool new feature. And let's do it over here for redesigned and reorganized fill by line art detection settings. So when I double click on this, it's gonna once again start an animation and it's gonna highlight some of the new settings here inside of the bucket fill tool for the fill by line art detection feature. So they said in their release notes that this new feature is a work in progress, so they're going to continue developing this. I'm sure they will try to have more demos of new features in future release versions. Sounds like a lot of work to me, but you know that will be super useful for the end user. So you can always exit out of here by clicking the red X in the corner. And if you ever need to get back to that window, just go to help, welcome dialog, and that will take you right back there. All right, so let's create a new image for the next new feature. So I'll hit Control N on the keyboard. We'll go with 1280 by 720 and click OK. And so now what I'll do is grab my paintbrush tool from the toolbox. So the next new feature is a key modifier where we can change the size of the brush from directly on the canvas. So what I can do is hold the Alt key and then right click with my mouse. And if I start to drag to the right, it's going to increase the size of the brush head. And if I drag to the left, it'll decrease the size until basically it runs out of room to decrease and then it increases again. So that's kind of a weird feature that it just sort of hits a stopping point there around 30 or so, and then it goes back to increasing in size. That's something they're probably gonna have to work on in future release versions, but that is the new feature. You can change the size of your brush on here. So that's gonna be good for digital painters. Let me grab a normal paintbrush and let's change the size here. So let's say you're painting, you wanna change the brush size real quick. You can hold Alt, drag with your right mouse click and hold Alt, drag the other direction there. So yeah, you can basically very quickly change the size of your brush. Let me just hit Control Z to delete all that. And then on a similar note, you can also set some additional key modifiers using your various mouse buttons on your mouse. They said supposedly it'll work on a mouse like this where you have a bunch of different buttons. So I haven't tested it out yet. Let's see what this thing can do. Let's go to Edit, Preferences. And under Canvas Interaction, I'll click on Modifiers. And you'll see here it says click here to set a buttons modifiers. That's a little misleading because when you left click on here, it says modifiers cannot be customized on the primary button of your mouse. So if I right click on here, you'll see there is the alt key modifier and it says that it's changing the brush size in canvas pixels. I'm gonna see what happens when I click on one of these weird buttons here on my mouse. So there it's gonna bring up a new little menu. Let's go with something like rotate view by 15 degree steps. And the modifier, let's go with shift. So when I hold the shift key and use a mouse button, uh, this side mouse button here and drag my mouse, it should allow me to rotate the view of the canvas. So I'll click okay, hold shift. And yeah, when I drag that, 
button on my mouse, it is allowing me to rotate my canvas. So that's kind of cool. Still getting used to it. There, I think we've reset and we're back to normal. So that's a pretty cool feature. You can now set key modifiers for the various keys on your mouse. The next new feature is that the zoom feature when using your mouse is now a little bit more intuitive. So let me show you what I mean. Usually if you hold control and use the mouse wheel to zoom in, you know, obviously as you uh, sort of roll the mouse wheel forward, it's zooming in, you roll the mouse wheel back, it's zooming out. But also if you click on your mouse button there on your mouse wheel and you zoom out, what used to happen before is that it would sort of be the same amount of movement no matter how much you move the mouse forward or back. And so what they've changed is that as you move your mouse forward more, so you drag it forward more or backwards more, it's changing how much you are zooming in. So if I move forward very slightly, it's zooming in very slightly. If I go out very slightly, it goes out very slightly. If I go forward a lot, it zooms in a lot. If I go out a lot, it zooms out a lot. So that's kind of what you would expect to happen. Makes it less choppy, makes GIMP much more intuitive. And I think this is what users expect when they're trying to zoom in and out using their mouse wheel. The next new feature is that there are new input device settings. So if we go to edit preferences, and I can come over here and scroll down to where it says input devices. So there are new settings in here. I think the most important one to mention is the paint tools. So now you've got these options for show brush outline and show pointer for paint tools. So the goal with this feature was to minimize the brush head for digital painters. I guess it's sort of a nuisance when you're trying to paint something and you have a big brush head always covering your artwork and moving around with your paintbrush. So this just allows people to turn off the paintbrush head and basically the final result of that is going to be almost like a single pixel brush head in the middle. They decided they didn't want to go fully without a brush head because then people would get confused and think the brush tool wasn't working. So let me click OK and just see what this looks like. If I grab the paintbrush tool, you'll see, maybe you'll see, it's very faint, but I've got just a single very tiny brush head here and that just helps users see, okay, you still have the brush head, it's still working, but it's not blocking what I'm painting, and therefore very minimalistic, and I can focus on my artwork. So that is a new feature. Let me just turn that off by going back to Edit Preferences. Scroll back down, Input Devices, and we'll turn both of those back on. So we're going to stay in the Preferences dialog. There are a few other new preferences that came with 2.99.12. So first off, let's come over here to Interface and over here to Theme. So GIMP added a new system theme. So let's click on that. And with this new system theme, there's a new color scheme, but they also have a new light theme that comes with this. So there's both a new light theme and dark theme. So you'll see here it says use dark theme variant if available. If I uncheck that, it's going to update the look of GIMP so that everything is in light mode. So they basically made the update where instead of having dark mode and light mode listed here separately, now you just have this little button here that toggles them on and off. So I'll check to keep dark mode on since everybody loves dark mode. And another new feature found inside the preferences for this version is going to be once again inside of interface. And I'll come over here to display. And under check style, I can now change this to custom checks. And what that's going to do is allow me to edit these two colors here, transparency custom color one and two. So what are these colors? These are actually the colors for the transparency checkerboard background. So whenever you erase the transparency in GIMP, it displays that default checkerboard background. Well, now they let you customize that background. So if you wanted to, you can now click on either one of these colors. And for example, I'll change this to red and click OK change this to, I don't know, green or something. Click OK, so you can use any of the colors available in GIMP. So I'll click OK. And come over here and click OK to apply those changes. And if I come over here to the Layers panel, and I right click on the background layer and add an alpha channel. If I now come over here and grab my eraser tool from the toolbox, and let's Alt, and right click to increase the size, that new feature in action there. 
Now if I erase, you'll see instead of this being a gray checkerboard background, it's now this red and green checkerboard background. So you guys might like that if you're using a composition where the colors are all gray or something and you want to be able to more easily see the transparent background there. So that's a pretty handy new feature. And you can always change that back by going to Edit, Preferences. Come back here to Display and just hit the Reset button. Hit Reset again and that will reset everything back including the theme which is going to be fine. So I'll just click OK and it'll tell you you have to restart GIMP for changes to take effect. I'll just click OK. The next new feature in GIMP is that the fill by line art detection feature receives some updates. You saw that in action a little bit earlier with the demo video that played inside of the welcome screen. So let me just show you real quick in the layers panel. I'll create a new layer. We'll just name it layer and I'll grab a paintbrush and let's use alt and the right click to decrease the size of that. And I'm just going to loosely draw a shape. And now if I hit shift B on the keyboard, that'll grab my bucket fill tool. And let's change the color here to something like red and click OK. So under affected area, I've got fill by line art detection selected. So first of all, they have recategorized the settings for this tool into three categories to try to make it easier for people to understand what this tool does. So now you've got line art detection as one category, line art closure as another one, and fill borders as another one. And there's actually a new feature inside of fill borders called stroke borders. So you can turn that on or off and you can choose how the borders are stroked. So by default with the paintbrush, if I click on that, we've got some other brush tools in here we can choose from. Let me exit out of that. They have automatic closure in here now, which from what I read inside the docs, it treats this value here as if the value was set to zero. Uh, but basically if I come over here and I fill this in, you'll see that you know the goal of this tool is to fill in the area. It can automatically close the gap thanks to the automatic closure feature there. And I believe the stroke borders feature is adding a stroke right around the edge of the fill. And actually, let me come over here and just uncheck this and hit control Z and click to fill it in. There you can see it does not stroke the edge. So it is basically just applying a rough stroke around the outline there. It doesn't look great if we come back and reapply that. So it doesn't look great right now, but that's what that's doing. So the last feature I'll mention before I dive into the CMYK stuff, which I know is what a lot of you came here for, is that there are some new zoom features when it comes to using pinch gestures on something like a click pad on a laptop. I believe this also works on tablet screens uh, and I will roll some footage over this, but basically you can now zoom in and out of your canvas using pinch gestures. And you can also zoom in on things like thumbnails in your layers panel or thumbnails inside of other areas of GIMP, including places like the gradient tool where you have thumbnails for different gradients. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links related to this video in the description, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.